Carl here from Games, Brains and a Headbanger Life and I'm super pleased to be chatting with the vocalist of the beloved and hugely respected British black metal band, The Infernal Sea. It is an absolute pleasure to be speaking with you. How are you doing? I'm good, yeah. Thanks for having us. No worries. How's life been for you then during the last couple of months of the COVID times? It's been very interesting, uh, mm. as I can imagine it has for everybody in the world at the moment. Um, I mean, we're we're quite fortunate that we have a press campaign going on. So for us, uh, we've actually been quite busy, um, minus playing any live shows. Um, but yeah, relatively speaking, it's been good for us band-wise. Mm. That's a nice thing to hear because not many bands have been able to say that. Even the ones kind of focusing on new music are kind of stuck in this we can only do this stuff from home effectively. Yeah, it's, it is difficult. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a lot of bands out there that were constantly touring and now that's just come to a come to a halt and mm. that's really hard for them, um, you know, because that was their income as well. Um, yeah, you, you've got to use the, the time to your advantage really and try and write new music where possible and, and just, just keep busy. Um, it's the only way the bands are going to survive um, and just hopefully ride it out and hope things change in the next well for foreseeable future nobody knows do we we can't say whether it's going to be two months or a year or whatever you know yeah. it's incredibly difficult and we talk to so many bands in different countries with so many different stories you and i share the same one we're both in the uk where our approach has been wildly different to say the American approach or the Swedish approach and so on. Um, but it is good to hear that your focus has effectively been on the upcoming new album, which I guess has just dominated your life. Definitely. Definitely. It's really, um, you know, it's full steam ahead with it. Um, it, it it's great. I mean, this, this album has been a long time coming. So um, for it to finally drop uh, and during a pandemic, could be ironic in that you know our previous album was about a pandemic um it, it's, it's good timing in a way for us because everybody's at home you know so everybody's focused on the internet yeah. uh, which is great you know you, you're reaching them people but would it have been a bit different if everybody was out and about you know it's it's hard to tell isn't it absolutely um the machine never really stops churning regardless yeah so true. Of course, you've already said it. We've talked about it at the time of recording. We are just over a month. Yeah, just over a month. 17th today, 18th of September is the release day um, from the release of the album. Do you enjoy this kind of long, drawn-out build that kind of comes with the territory of being in a modern band? I think so. I think it's exciting. Um I come from a sort of older school background. So for me, the whole build up, you know, when you used to buy the magazines, you used to buy Mel Hammer, or you buy Krang or Terrorizer and you'd see all the articles and it would be like an advert, you know, from a certain label saying that so-and-so album's coming out in several months. And you, you were excited because you didn't have access to it. So therefore you would, you'd be ready, you know, the video would drop on MTV and you'd be like, oh, mate, you know, it's a brand new single from blah, blah. Now, obviously, it's a bit different because everything is is at our dispense. You know, we can we can go online and we can find something. We can listen to it for thirty seconds. We can move on to the next thing. So, it's good to kind of keep that momentum and excitement going. So for us, yeah, I think it's great, and I'm and I'm hoping people are enjoying it. You know, we we drip feeding them new songs and you know new information and snippets from the album. So yeah, hopefully it's exciting for them. But it it's more that yeah, it comes from a an old school way of absorbing music for us. Put through this filter of modern times where, as you say, you put out a single and do you find yourself then obsessing over the stats, you know, views and comments and things like that? It's important. Um, it is in this day and age where everything is about stats and comments and views, unfortunately, but that, that necessarily doesn't mean anything. You know, a band could have 10,000 views or tons of comments, but 
you know, they play shows and they play to 20 people in the same, mm. you know, the same venues all the time. It doesn't mean anything. Um, but it is important to see and how you're engaging with people because, unfortunately, that's that's the future. You know, it's there's no avoiding this. Um, mm-hmm. You can be as old school as you want and you can release stuff on just tape and, and have done with it, you know, but it's you're not going to get anywhere. You've got to embrace this modern age of excessive music. Um, regardless of whether you like it or not, really. Um, I'm just grateful that, and I, you know, it doesn't make me sound old, but I'm just grateful that I have experienced both methods. Yes. Uh, yes. Because you can look back I... on the old way fondly and you can look at the new way fondly, you know? And accept as well, as you said, this is the way it is. You either get on board or you stay at the station and get yeah. left behind. Exactly. Exactly. Two singles so far. The eye-watering, no frills, furious before an order, and the layered savagery of the title track. Uh, both have gone down exceptionally well. We're talking about comments and feedback. Uh, both have been beloved already. Does that surprise you? Um, no, not really. Um, Good. That, that's, that sounds very modest. Um, I think we've kind of nailed that the Infernal Sea sound. Um, I think people know what to expect. Um, you know, it, it was there on the Great Mortality, and it was there on Agents of Satan, and it's kind of just led people to it. Um, it is, it is a progression, so it is slightly different. But I think people, yeah, as, as I just said, I think people can see that we've we've slowly progressed this sound. Um, I am really excited to see what people think of the whole album as a whole, because um, there are some different sounding songs on there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think they're, they're good songs. So, you know, I, I'm pleased and we're pleased that actually everyone's digging them, you know, because that's the important thing. If it, if they came out and everyone said they were shit, then we'd be done. <laughs> <it>? yeah. <laughs> Stay in the obvious, but you're absolutely right. Um, are we, is the plan to drop a third single before the 18th or is that it? So there will be a third single coming. Yes. Um, potentially in the next couple of weeks. Um, and this one will be quite different to the two that you've heard. Um, so, yeah, that that should hopefully end of the month, all being well. Great. Watch that space. What about the album as a whole, then? Was there a particular theme or idea that you found yourselves either focused on or you grabbed hold of and were running with that idea? So with this album, um, we lyrically return back to the Middle Ages again. Um, it's a subject that I'm quite interested in. Uh, this time it's kind of still focused on the sadistic nature of mankind, which seems to be an overall feel, uh, theme in all of our albums. So, you know, we had it on Great Mortality, we had it on Call of the Arga, um, and even with Agents of Satan. It, it, and, but this time we're talking about the Knights Templar and the Holy Crusades, uh, but looking at how the church influenced them to basically commit acts of depravity and corruption and genocide and anti-Semitism and just real crazy shit that was all under the banner of of God. You know, uh, if you look it up, the Knights Templar did some horrendous shit. Where does your interest in that historic um, period, Middle Ages, you said, um, come from? Something from childhood you've always been interested, studied? It's just something you just kind of dabble in here and there and it's it's just a really interesting subject it's so broad so much happened um and that we're not really taught it you know growing up in schools it's something you mm. have to actively you know search for and it, it's kind of w- when you're a kid it's a cool subject you know you want to read about knights and all their tales and you know as obviously there's a lot of um fairy tales that have been ingrained in us in childhood you know with like um Ring of Roses was obviously based, supposedly based on the plague and stuff. So mm. it's all ingrained in there. And I think it's just such a cool subject that when you start exploring it, you start to realize how horrible a time it was. Like, no matter who you were, you were just, you were just screwed. Like, whether you were rich, whether you were poor, it was just a nasty, nasty time. <laughs> you know? And that lends itself lyrically and thematically to black metal because you know you get the aggression of the music and the aggressive nature of the history and you combine that and it's just perfect 
and when it comes to kind of like writing the lyrics, do you sort of sit down and pour through books for ideas or is it just something you remember and you heard and you think, okay, there's the spark. Let me follow that. So it's a, it's a bit of everything. I, you know, I do research online um, and it has like a bit of poetic license to it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be as historically correct as possible with a, little bits of change but um we'll go through books as well and it's more that i just get an idea in a head that i'll be like okay you know let's do the knights templar and and obviously because it's such a broad subject you can't cover that on eight songs mm. so it's about just keep picking out key moments during those crusades and the, the reign of the templar and just singing about them and hoping that people will take from this and you know, research it themselves and, and find out more about that period. Is it massively important to you that um, people pick up the elements that you're trying to explain? So, you know, if you're trying to tell a story or talk about a specific event, um, is it important for you if they get that, I guess? Definitely, definitely. Because, you know, as I said, so much horrible stuff happened. I mean, there's accounts where the Knights Templar would siege castles and then they would herd thousands of people together and then just burn them, you know, all because they didn't follow Christianity. Mm. And that's insane. And, and I feel that as, as we progress through human nature, we need to learn from these past mistakes. And, you know, a lot of that's not being taught in schools. And, you know, it, I think it needs to be, you know, like I said, these are horrible, horrible acts that were committed. Um, and yeah, if, if it if it gives somebody the urge to go out and research that, then brilliant. And like I say, they'll they'll find even more nasty st stuff hiding underneath. A combination of just listening to great black metal music and getting the education at the same time. Exactly. And, and again, it's just interesting, you know, it's like not just the uk but there's rich history here there's there's so much to sing about and so much to learn um you know and from every country every country has its its history so yeah i, I just think it's i think more bands should do it it's just interesting mm. so it's been five years since the last album great mortality three years since a agents of satan what's different in your opinion about the infernal sea in 2020 we have we've progressed a lot since the the great mortality days we've learned quite a lot um you know we've become quite a noticeable force on the live circuit um and i feel that we've just progressed and matured musically um you know it's, it has taken us a while there's quite a few hurdles that were getting in the way of this album but we overcame them and it eventually came out and um yeah i just think it's it just shows a new side of us um, that we're you know we're here to stay we're not going anywhere and yeah after this is this is our 10th year together actually um and we were going to celebrate 10 years as a band but obviously uh covid has screwed that but um yeah i think it's just more that we've matured and become you know quite a force within the uk scene now yeah it's um amazing in such a short amount of time the word legendary is almost already banded about in reference to the infernal sea um, if you didn't know and you didn't look it up, you would think you guys have been 30 years on the circuit compared to the 10. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's, you know, and the fact that we're getting to play a lot more higher um, spec shows, you know, getting on the festivals and stuff, that's really helping because as a band, we want to branch out and, and uh, you know, get your metal heads and get your punks and get your black metal fans and your death metal fans because that's the only way you're going to progress. You can't stick to just the black metal elite. Um, you've got to brand, you know, mm. re branch out and try and get as many people as you can. And um, I think like playing places like Bloodstock and Cineration and Damnation are, are perfect, you know, stepping stones for that. Um, and I feel that we play the sort of black metal that it's got a good crossover you know you can have the metal kids you can have the hardcore kids you can have the punk kids they're all into it because it's got something about it it's got all them influences thrown in that that they can connect to it in some way at its core no matter how many subgenres we use and how we often try to break it down the ultimate thing is if you like heavy metal metal if you like it loud there you go exactly and i think that's what a lot of people forget these days like 
the end of the day, if you like metal, you like metal. You know, mm. you you can like you can like death metal and you can like thrash. You can like hair metal. You can like you know grindcore or whatever. Like it doesn't matter. It's all under the same banner of heavy metal. Like just love just love music for music if if that's what you're into you know and and i feel that because of all these subgenres over the years it's all become quite narrow minded so everyone's you know the death metal kids stick to the death metal crowds and the black metal kids stick to the black metal crowds and it's it shouldn't be like that like just go to whatever show you want to and then you know and fucking enjoy it. it's heavy metal <laughs> you make it sound so simple if only it was the case exactly you know and, that, and that's the problem isn't it it has become quite um what's the word Com- i suppose it's quite convoluted in a way but yeah it's a shame but it is again you know it's the way it is isn't it that's it um we already talked about live performances obviously everything's been put in a hole it seems like you have obviously accepted this and come to terms with the simple fact that the album's going to be released and you're not going to be able to get out this year likely is that the case are you comfortable with that fact uh, to be honest, yeah. I mean, we're not the most sociable of people anyway, so for us, that's quite good. But um, <laughs> it's, I think we're quite lucky in a way that we're um, a black metal band as well, because unless you like the, the big, massive black metal bands at all all the time, black metal bands don't play that many shows. They're very, they're, they're quite select. So I think we're kind of lucky in that aspect. Um, we d- we did have plans to do a tour in September. Um, but obviously, we're, you know, we're, we're going to delay that. Um, but I don't think there's any rush. I think everybody's in the same boat. Everybody is being a bit cautious about, you know, gigs happening. So there's no point in rushing. Um, we'll just do it as and when. And I think everybody be in the same boat in that they'll all be gagging for music and bands mm. will be dying to play. And, you know, they're hopefully they're going to be good, well attended shows and everyone's going to have a lot of fun. Um that's that is hope. the hope. Yeah. Of course, um, that's the provided we've got any venues left. Grassroots venues in the UK, quite important to the Infernal Sea. You cut your teeth on some of the smallest venues in this country and have moved your way through all over. Um, how concerned are you about the future of the kind of metal underground scene in the UK? It is a big concern. If you lose them grassroots venues, then, you know, you're screwed because... They're the only venues that are really giving smaller bands a chance. Um, you know, it, it it's hard to get on. You know, if you a band like us are, are probably going to struggle to play, say, for example, the London Forum. You know, it's a big step up. So, you know, we need venues like the Black Heart or the Underworld or, um, you know, it, uh, Barrowlands in Glasgow. Is Barrowlands still open in Glasgow anyway? But all them, you know, all them venues that a slightly that mid tier mm. if they disappear then how are bands going to progress and you can see it because you can't just jump from the underground onto festival stages you need to work your way up via that middle tier yeah and like i say if all them venues are gone there is no middle tier so there's no progression which makes you think that come 20 years time who's going to be on these festivals you can't keep putting on the same bands of the past 20 years on these festivals with no progression Mm -hmm. so it's music wise in the industry it's quite a troubling time if you think about it so yeah you lose them and that's going to have a massive knock-on effect for the future and it's a big question and probably not fair to throw it at you but in your opinion what do you think can be done to help i think it's just People just need to support them. So if the venues are doing things like, you know, uh, for example, there's a venue called the Crawford Arms um, in Milton Keynes, Wolverton. Yeah. Great venue. Um, and they're just, you know, trying to get people in, doing takeaway drinks and stuff like that. Just go and support them. If they're, if they're doing little activities, support. If they're doing, like, fundraisers, support them. That's the only way they're going to survive, you know. And when these venues open, go. Don't just sit at home and be like, oh, no, I'm not going to go now because that's going to cripple them. Yeah. You know, as soon as they open, if nobody starts attending these venues, that'll be the death of them. So I think everybody just needs to show their support as much as possible. Um, because when they're gone, you'll soon be pining for it. Absolutely. Right, we're getting to the end then. Um, what plans 
uh, if any that you can talk about, do you perhaps even have in the works over the, say, next 12 months? So depending on the situation, obviously we'll we'll do some touring and support of the album um, and just keep promoting that as much as possible. Um, but for 2021, we, we've we been talking about some potential new releases, just some um, little, little sort of like, not stopgap releases, but just some, you know, fun little pieces. So mm. yeah, we're in talks with them um, about recording new music for that. So yeah, 2021 should have some uh, interesting stuff for us, I think. And I'm sure, of course, you're eyeing up the festival season of 2021 to a certain degree. Definitely. I think the problem with the festival season for 2021 is it's um, all the bands from 2020 are playing. So unfortunately, um, a lot of the festivals are probably 90% booked. Um, so I think a lot of bands are going to try and struggle to get on there. But um, hopefully, yeah, I mean, you know, we want to try and play as many as we can. Um, but again, you know, they're literally, they're trying to save 2020 into 2021, which, you know, you can completely understand. So um, you can't, um, you know, fob everyone off from 2020 and start again, can you really? So, no, absolutely. Um, but yeah, if we can, then great. I mean, there's a few that have not been announced that we, you know, will be revealed soon. But yeah. Well, I have to mention this because it's um, our specific favourite festival, Bloodstock. And obviously you made a bit of a name there. New Blood 2013, Selfie Stage in 2017. That's four years between those shows, which would make 2021 four years between that show. I feel there's a main stage slot calling. That would be absolutely incredible. What we need to do is we need to rally the troops and get them, uh, you know, going to Bloodstock and telling them that they want the Infernal Sea. Um, and then, hope, you know, they'll they will take heed and put us on. But, um, yeah, Bloodstock is an amazing festival. Um, you know, they've really helped us um, jump from the new, new Blood stage to that Sophie stage. And, you know, the, the reaction and response we had for the Sophie stage was just incredible. And, you know, one will never forget. So... Uh, yeah, forever indebted to Bloodstock. It's they're doing it right. They they support the underground. They know that the underground bands need a stepping stone. Same as Damnation. Same as Incineration. You know, they're looking out for the UK bands, and I, that is really really important. Brilliant. Last but not least, the Infernal T. Please explain that. <laughs> it's uh, it's just a bonkers idea that we came up with, and. Um, we just thought, you know what? <laughs> Why the fuck not? Like Absolutely. everybody does, everyone does alcohol. They do coffee, and we're like, we're an English black metal band. Like, you know, what's England notorious for? Tea. So we thought, let's use this medieval theme that we have to our advantage and create some medieval blends. And we worked with this woman uh, called Hannah Sells Tea, and she she's been fantastic, and she helped us create these, you know, ridiculous blends of. And it, they're all ingredients that we used in remedies during medieval times. So it's it's just cool. And, you know, why not? And people love it. You know, it's, it is it is a bonkers idea, but we thought we'd run with it. Love yeah, it. And it paid off, you know. Absolutely. I love thinking outside the box there. Different way of looking at merch, you know, T-shirts, CDs, all that's the standard. But here's something so clearly different and imaginative. I love it. It's good. It's just interesting, isn't it? It's nice to see bands do that as well. And it, yeah, thinking out of the box is great because it, you know, it builds up a bit of hype as well. And um, yeah, it's. I think people uh, they'll buy into it a lot more if it's got a, a theme. And you know, you're not just doing it for the sake of doing it. You know. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, we're, we're glad we did it. So yeah, we'll have to think of some more pun based stuff next. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. What a way to end. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Nice one. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?